Okay, this was the Canucks' number one target. Uh, there was nobody up there as high, Donnie, as uh, Lindholm. They got their guy. He's a two-way center who can shut down opposing teams' best players. There was a game in December, uh, Calgary and Colorado, and the Canucks scouts were there, and he was fabulous that night, Donnie. Shut down Colorado's top players. Um, this is a dynamic player. This was the guy they wanted. But, Don, dynamic? I love... Huh? Dynamic? Well, just on both ends of the rink. I'm not talking offensively. I love the fact that Canucks not only went, went for Lindholm, Donnie, they went for Chris Tanev as well. They, 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 that's your biggest sign, Canuck fans, that this management team is going for it. They clearly think they have a shot to win the Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm. Not only, okay, they got Lindholm, but they tried to get Tanev as well. They worked hard. They've been trying to get Tanev for a long time. I've been beaten. Uh, Tanev's drums in this market for a long time, Donnie, for a reason. Because I know the players, the management, everybody wants this guy. Back, well, quit laughing. Uh, uh, they want Tanev, and they've been after him for a long time. That's why I've been, uh, you know, been uh, saying his name. Even for... beating his drums. <laughs> well, you know what the phrase is. You know what I'm trying Actually, to say. I don't. Okay. They've been after Tanev for a long time. They absolutely love him. Uh, they gave it a shot here in the last four days. It didn't work. The Flames think... Donnie, they can get a first round for him. And you know why they think that? Because there's 10 teams in on Tanev. The competition yeah. for Tanev is incredible right now. Are the Canucks still in on him? Yes, they are still going to poke around it. But I heard one team this morning is trying to get creative uh, to get Tanev. The amount of teams after Tanev, that's why the Flames can command and ask for a first round and hang tight and wait for it. Was that the case with Lindholm? What do you mean? Well, were the, a lot of teams after Lindholm? Oh yes, we've got a yes. clip of yeah. Craig Conroy yeah, 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 uh, from was. yesterday yeah, there was. being interviewed after the deal, and it seems like there was a lot of teams uh, after him. Yes, there were. You're right. And the Canucks would have had to have paid, I would think, a little bit of a steeper price to get him this early, Rick. Yeah. Right when there's when there's less less Absolutely. pressure. Bef- Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. This, Absolutely. This don't. long before uh, the deadline. Yep, I agree. Um, look. I hated, I hated, hated the Philip Hronik trade. And this you group, did. hats off to them. They've proven me wrong, which isn't all that hard to do. I, I hated it. I hated, I hated giving up. Uh, I hated the Canucks giving up a first round draft. And I'm talking about me being somebody who's yep. followed this team since day one, uh, back in 1970 at, at the Coliseum. And again, they've, they've proved me wrong. They have, they've got a legitimate top four, top two right-handed defenseman. They've been talking about that forever, Long and, and, and they and they landed him uh, with uh, with that first first rounder. Here's what I like about the deal, and I'm giving the deal a, a thumbs up. Okay. The Canucks or Patrick Alvin said, "What was it? A couple of weeks ago? I, I can't remember the the exact date." Yeah. But said something to the effect, and it was an article on Sportsnet.ca in that web on that website by Ian Mac, McIntyre that. He felt the way this season has gone, and it's been fabulous so far. Yeah. I think everybody who follows the Canucks, anybody who follows the NHL w- would, would agree. Yeah. He said he felt obligated to be a- aggressive. He owes it to the yes. players to be aggressive yes. Yes. before the trade deadline yes. to, to make sure something happens or to give them the best chance of something positive happening in, in the playoffs. Absolutely. This is, this is extremely aggressive. Yes. But – what what I said after hearing that, I, I wondered if didn't he also owe it to the players to keep this group together Chemistry. to see what they could do? Yeah, and he, he he covered all bases with this deal. He and Jim Rutherford covered all bases with this deal. And here's what I mean by that: Did they really take anybody off the roster, Rick? Because no, all due respect to Andre Kuzmenko and his agent Dan Milstein is going to join us in a little bit in a playoff game. In a big game, crunch time, Andre Kuzmenko wasn't. He gonna, needed. Well, he wasn't going to see the ice. He needed a change so, of scenery. Well, sure, but he wasn't going to see the he ice. He wasn't going to see the ice. Not so the somebody who's not going to see the ice, or in a big playoff game, or just a playoff game in general, I, I'm thinking Kuzmenko, with the way things were going, and and God bless him. I hope things work out for him in Calgary. He was he was going to be in the press box. He was going to be. It, so it, they it, really aren't subtracting anything. From their roster, I'm okay. sorry. I, I say that with with, with all yep. all due respect, and, and that has a lot to do with Rick Tockett's opinion yeah. of Andre Kuzmenko. So they add, they're aggressive with with Lindholm, 
and they really don't take anybody off the roster. No, they don't. And here's I, a, I'm, I'm it, Donnie, sorry to, I hate saying that. Yeah, I, no, you, you're, you're phrasing it right. He wasn't playing the way Tockett wanted him to play. Mm-hmm. It wasn't going. It was ending. It was going to end up in a divorce. We all know that. Mm-hmm. It ended up in a divorce. And so, but you you mentioned they didn't take anyone off the roster. I'm going to tell you something right now. They got one of the top guys, if not the top guy on the market, did not give up Willander or yeah. Lekaramaki, did not give up Pod Colson or Baines. That is very impressive. And that is something today the club is very happy about, is they didn't get... Look at... Or, uh, or, or the Elias Pettersson, the defenseman. Yeah. The, I, I, I do want to say... The prospect pool yeah, still looks pretty good. Intact. Concerned. I want to say something about Hunter Biscavich. I, I talked to his agents last night and this morning. Um, the kid loved Vancouver, obviously. This was not an easy player to part with. If you think it was easy to part with him, you're wrong. That's a player that can come back and bite you someday. But here's what I say to Hunter Biscavich. We got a guy named Quinn Hughes here. You're an offensive-minded defenseman. You'll never play on the power play in Vancouver. You got a chance to go to Calgary, be on the power play in Calgary. Well, the the other thing, Rick, and I, I wonder if this um, clinched it for the Canucks in terms of thinking this is somebody we could get somebody for. Yeah. Team USA, World Juniors. World Juniors didn't pick him. They did. They didn't have him on their. their uh, didn't have him on their roster. Yeah. They end up winning gold. I mean, tough roster to crack. Yeah. But we're talking about a kid who, at one point this season, was forget top five in scoring in the OHL. He was leading the OHL. Well, the in whole scoring, league. And they they didn't pick him. And I'm, th- that isn't yeah. a knock against them. But but I I just wonder just how 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 many eyebrows that raised when it came to Canuck uh, management. So, and again, goals and assists aren't anything. I mentioned Yanni Yermo, fairly slow developing, getting traded in the Finnish league. So there's that. And then there's that first round draft pick. Again, I hate it. Yeah. This isn't the same situation as Heronic. As the, as Heronic in that their draft pick this year, their first overall, it's yeah. going to be a late first round draft pick. It's going to be late. Extremely late yeah. first round draft pick. And you throw in the fourth rounder. I don't think that hurts no. th- th- um, that much. Uh, I will say this: there's almost no point for Canuck fans to watch the NHL draft this year. What do they have? Four picks left. Yeah. In, in in the 2024 what do they draft, have four, yeah. only but four picks. If they have some any type of postseason success, that's the deal. I think they'll make. So, thumbs up on the deal. 